Hello, my name is McKinley Grimes with Future Plus Systems, and today we are going to be going over the LPDDR5 system validation. The purpose of this presentation is to discuss what is LPDDR memory protocol, go over some protocol examples, what happens if the protocol is violated, examples of protocol violations, Rowhammer and what Rowhammer is and how to protect your design and how to probe the target for protocol validation testing. The protocol is the commands and the timing between the commands used on the LP DDR memory bus for system on chip to DRAM communication. Here are a few examples of some of the more common symbols and the corresponding parameter. The TXXX is the symbol and the parameter is the description of what the symbol means. Some examples of these symbols are TRRD, which is the minimum act to act timing, TRCD, the minimum act to read, TRAS, the minimum act to precharge, which would be the amount of time the bank is open. TRC, which is the row cycle time or minimum act to act same bank. And lastly, TRP defines the minimum time between the closing of a bank with a precharge command and the opening of a bank with an act command. The picture on this slide is a timing diagram from the LPDDR5 specification showing TRTW, and that is the minimum time between the read FIFO and the right FIFO. The symbol TRTW stands for read to write delay. It is a timing parameter that represents the minimum time required between a read operation and a subsequent write operation in the same memory bank. Its purpose is to ensure that the memory system has enough time to properly complete the read operation and prepare for the subsequent write operation without any data corruption or interference. It is an important parameter to consider when designing memory systems using LPDDR5, as violating the TRTW timing requirement can result in errors or data integrity issues. By adhering to the TRTW timing specifications, memory controllers and devices can ensure proper operation and reliable data transfer between reads and writes in LPDDR5 memory. Within the LPDDR5 specification are many charts like this that show the different protocol violations. This chart defines the timing between various mode register read and write commands and regular read and write commands. The time that determines if a symbol violates can be calculated by either a single parameter or defined by an equation. The rounding algorithm is important, as if used more than once in an equation, it can be done incorrectly and have a larger effect on the outcome. For example, the system flagging certain sequences as violations when they are not really violations. Inaccurate timing parameters could also lead to the system on chip not being able to signal that an operation has failed. So when calculating timing parameters, make sure that whenever there is an algorithm to determine a parameter, round up to the next integer number when determining the clock cycles. So what happens if your design violates the protocol? Well, you'll never know until the data is used and something bad happens. Protocol violations in LPDDR5 are important because they can result in errors or data corruption in the memory system. If the memory controller sends commands or data at inaccurate times or to the wrong locations, the memory device may not respond as expected, leading to data corruption or errors in the system memory. To find these errors in the system memory, we use the FS2800 DDR Detective. In this slide, we show a picture of a trace from the DDR detective that shows an activate command too close to a write command. You will see the activate command is targeting the row 280FC and bank 7. This will open the location for the following write, which adds to the column address of 2. For this trace, the command bus is operating at 533 MHz in 8 bank mode. This is TRCD, 
which is calculated by the max of either 18 nanoseconds divided by 1.875 or two clock ticks. When we calculate, we get 10 clock cycles. In our state listing, we put markers on the activate command and the write command. And on the top left, you will see that there's a measurement between those two markers that says that it is six clock cycles. So we know that this is a violation. If you are using ECC, it may be able to flag this error if the number of bits is low enough to be detected, but ECC on LP5 is single and double bit detection, but only single bit correction. Here we have another example of a data capture from the detective, and this violation is an activate command too close to a precharge. This can result in a phenomenon known as activate to precharge conflict or violation. This occurs when the precharge command is issued to a memory road that is already in the process of being activated, or when the activate command is issued to a memory road that is still in the process of being precharged. When this conflict occurs, it can lead to data corruption or errors in the memory system. This is because the precharge command prematurely ends the activation process, potentially leaving the row in an undefined or unstable state. Similarly, the activate commands may not properly activate the row, resulting in incorrect data or addressing. The symbol for this violation is TRAS, and it is calculated by rounding up 42 nanoseconds divided by 1.875. This trace was again captured at 533 MHz in 8 bank mode. The spec says 23 clock cycles, but we can see with our marker measurement that the clock cycles is measured at 17, which would again indicate that this is a violation. Our next capture shows a write command being too close in time to a read command. This can result in a write to read violation or conflict. When this violation occurs, it can lead to data corruption or errors in the memory system. This is because the write and read operations can interfere with each other, potentially overwriting or corrupting the data being read or written to. To prevent this violation in LP5, the JEDEC specification defines minimum timing requirements for write and read commands, including the write recovery time parameter. This timing parameter ensures that there is sufficient time between write and read commands, allowing the memory system to properly complete each operation before transitioning to the next. The equation to calculate the timing parameter is shown on the slide, and we see that the spec calculates this violation as 19, but we measured as six. Now switching gears from protocol violations, we'll talk about a significant issue called Rowhammer. Rowhammer is a memory-related issue that can occur in LP5 and other DRAM technologies. Rowhammer occurs when repeated accessing of a particular memory row in a DRAM chip causes disturbances in the adjacent rows, leading to bit flips or data corruption. What happens is that the memory controller repeatedly activates and deactivates memory rows in quick succession, leading to an electrical interference between the rows. This can cause a hammering effect that can eventually result in bit flips or other errors in the system memory. It was once believed that it was just the immediate adjacent locations that could be victims to this hammering effect. But what has been recently discovered is that the hammering effect can have a blast radius, meaning that it is not just the adjacent locations, but locations several physical rows away that can also experience bit flips. So how can we protect ourselves against Rowhammer? One step is to see if your design might succumb to Rowhammer errors by looking at the number of activate commands generated during a workload. This would be a high traffic situation. In addition, if your designs get mystery ghost errors that could cause a crash, but can rarely be repeated, you may want to check for row hammer events. There are several protocol and logic analyzers on the market that can help with this solution, including our DDR detective. Currently, the JEDEC Data Integrity Committee is proposing several refresh management protocols to help, and if your company is a member of JEDEC, you should be aware of these. 
Another step is that if your system on chip supports ECC, we suggest that you turn that on. Here are some examples of how to probe the LP5 in order to connect a logic or protocol analyzer. Starting with the mid-bus probing, this is where a soft touch footprint can spring pin fixture has to be placed on the motherboard at design time. The second one along the top is a winged BGA interposer. The third is using a scope interposer with flying leads to a protocol analyzer. The red square is a BGA interposer that uses the mid-bus footprint. Next to that is a scope interposer that is normally used for scope attachment, but in this case shows a close-up of a flying lead connection that we have above. The last is actually a SO DIM interposer, as we have seen some companies wish to put LP DDR memory on an SO DIM. To summarize what we've discussed in this presentation, it is important to ensure proper operation and reliability of the LP DDR5 memory system. It is important to follow the timing and protocol specifications outlined in the JEDEX specification for LP5. This includes adhering to the timing parameters for different command and data transfer operations, properly configuring the memory device and controller, and ensuring proper signal timing and noise reduction measures are in place. By avoiding protocol violations and following the specifications, the LP5 memory system can operate as intended and provide reliable and consistent performance. It is also recommended to check for row hammer events and utilize ECC whenever possible. And remember to round up when calculating violation parameters. Thanks for listening and looking forward to continue identifying and solving system memory errors.